Hi, welcome to another video. A while back I demonstrated the basics of this Zero Plus Lapsi Logic Analyzer 16 and 32 channel. As I explained before, it can decode over 121 different protocols. Today I'm going to be showing you how powerful it is at decoding the CAN2B protocol on a car. If you've seen my CAN videos, I tried to capture some data with my Keysight scope and the memory capacity just wasn't there. I'll show you how powerful this is and a guide to how to set it up and then what you can do with the data. So ideal for hacking or reverse engineering the CAN communication on your vehicle. I mean this not only does CAN, it does LIN, so if you're talking to vehicles don't just buy a CAN decoder, if you buy something like this you get the LIN decoder and the UR decoder and the flex ray decoder this logic cube can also decode the CAN FD, which is the flexible data rate. So flexible data rate, CAN, CAN do B, flex ray, LIN bus, everything you can find on a car. Let me uh, give you a look. I'll do some screen capture as well. It's getting dark, which means we won't get the sun reflecting off this screen, which is good news, but I'll do some uh, video capture as well let you see the data on the screen and I'll show you how powerful this is right this is the setup in the car I've got the same car Peugeot 308 built in 2009 that's the diagnostic connector and I've just put a ribbon cable in there to break out some of the wires right I'm in the car so you'll have to excuse the cars going past let me open this lapsy Right, this is the basic interface. So I'll show you how to configure it for CAN. This particular unit I'm demonstrating today is a 32 channel. But all these options are available on the entry level. As I said, I'll do a screen capture, but I'll show you the basics. So this laptop is a Windows 7 32 bit, specifically for the Peugeot diagnostic software. But So come over here, right click. Delete all channels. Then we want just want one channel. So if you've seen my other CAN videos, you'll understand we've got CAN high, CAN low. If everything is working, CAN high is a mirror of CAN low. Well, I've opened my Lapsy on the computer, having issues with the software on the laptop. This is the home screen for the Zero Plus Lapsy series. So easiest way to capture can. Delete all channels. Just here. Yes. We want one channel to capture the can. Channel assignment. Depending on how many channels your logic cube's got, they'll be listed here. So add channel, one channel. Channel naught, so the first. OK, that's our digital channel, we could rename it there. Group this into a bus. Then once we've got the bus assigned, bus protocol. Click, I'm trying to point with my finger, but protocol decoder here. So as I said, if you're working on a car, you could type in, so there's LIN line code and LIN 2.1 there. Flex ray for BMWs, not sure what other vehicles use this. That can, that's similar to CAN and it runs up to 2 megabits a second. Whereas the conventional CAN that we're discussing today is up to 1 megabit. And then put CA in the find, give us our CAN, so flexible data rate and then the CAN 2B configuration. We want 500 thousand for the board rate leave everything else as it is click OK actually it was cancel this cancel that up here because I haven't used this system on this computer in a while the internal clock has got to be four times faster than the board rate so we want a board rate of 500,000 
we haven't got a 2 megs here, so we've set the internal clock at 10 megs. Uh, and whilst we're here, set the memory depth to 512k. Now we can go back to the bus properties, right click, bus, click on the decoder button here. As I said, you can find, type the initials in here, and find Flexray, Lin, UART. We want CAN, so CA for CAN, there's a flexible data rate, and then a CAN 2B. Back to configuration. Now it will allow us to have a 500,000 board rate. Click OK, OK. That's it, we're ready. So there's our bus, there's a CAN, one wire, and you would simply click play. Here, actually, this 50%, this will capture data in front of the trigger point. Uh, yeah, 50% or 100% in front of the trigger point, so we want zero. We want nothing captured in front of the trigger. Well, so we've got a 10 meg sampling clock. We're selecting no data before the trigger, no, not no percentage. 512k memory depth, hit play. There we go. Now this data, I've opened a packet, so if I go, if I show you at the top, I'll show you, as I said, I'll show you in the screen capture. So view, packet list, that's taken it away. This is just the navigation window. If I hit F10, this is our complete captured data. So go back to packet list. Packet list, there we are. It's easier to see the packets down the bottom. So to give you some background on trying to reverse engineer the CAN system, uh, on this particular Peugeot, there are three CAN systems. Now they're all the same CAN specification. There's 11, 8, 9, 8, 2. And some manufacturers call the different buses like high speed, medium speed and low speed. They're not. They're all the same bus and they're just set to run at different speeds. So on this car, for example, we've got the 500 kilobit. Uh, then I, I do know there's a slower one, 125 kilobit, but not to be confused with a low speed, fault tolerant uh, system. That's a different protocol. This high speed can, 0 to 1 megabits a second, yeah, as I say, is set to 500 megabits on like the ABS and engine. The instrument cluster has maybe 250 and the communication to the diagnostic port and maybe the built-in system interface which is the fuse box behind a glove box uh, I think that's 250 maybe just 115 another issue I wasn't too sure about years ago when I first started trying to hack or reverse engineer the CAN bus on this Peugeot you've got I, I mentioned there's something like 16 different IDs now I've come to understand the engine control module could send out 16 or even 20 or more different identifications for different items on the vehicle. So this, for example, this 208, I know these first two bytes are engine speed, and I, I mentioned a couple of years ago, uh, here is a throttle, I think one's engine load, uh, brake switch, uh, these change if the brake switch is pressed or not, so the engine is obviously sending out this data, uh, being picked up by the instrument cluster and probably the built-in system interface, which is the fuse box. So I don't actually know where this data is coming from. It could be just the built-in system interface. And when you've got an interface between a faster bus and, let's say, one that's not running as fast, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll call, they tend to call it a gateway. I mean, in, in my view, it's not really a gateway, but that seems to be the the preferred term on a Peugeot, the BSI is a built-in system interface, seems to be the gateway. So if you're trying to reverse engineer your CAN system, you want to assign the biggest amount of memory possible. And seeing how we've only got one channel, that's an awful lot of memory. 
So on this system, we, we've got available four megs, but in my experience, one meg is sufficient. That gives you, you know, hundreds of bits of data to run through. So this is the engine revs. I've yet to figure out the calculation between that byte and that byte on how to get something like 730 revs. So if I run another capture, with this time with the ignition, the ignition on, but the engine off. But what I might do, I'll press the brake, so you see one of these will change. I know, in fact, I'll press the throttle, so this should come up to near uh, 2C, or 200, whatever that is in decimal. So we'll have nothing here, the engine will be off, and 2C. Right, so the ignition's on, throttle's down, got one meg capture, one meg memory, press play, a little capture memory coming up at the end. So we've got a few frame errors there. But what we can do, we can filter those out down here. So we can have a look at standard messages, extended, if I let go, yeah, extended messages, and this last one, remote. So remote message is if one ECU asks another one for data, or in my case, if this computer asks the engine for data, that will be a remote transmission. So now we've saved that data, and it's, believe me, it's, it's going to take you hours to go through it and analyse each bit. But if we just look at that first bit, see we've got no revs now, zero, zero. I'll press the throttle hard down, is that C8? I think it's C8, and C8 converting from hex to decimal should be 200, uh, which means when you press the throttle, you get a difference, you get an effective analog reading from 0 to 200 in layman's terms, but in digital, 0 to C8. We can see, yeah, so no revs, that's an engine load. So now, I can run over to this arrow, hopefully you can see it on this PC, and just start scrolling down. Now this 7, this, this 7F2 is probably, this dialog box interface is connected to the, to the car and I'm connected to that. 7s on Peugeot's tend to be the diagnostics. As you've seen in my other videos, so we've got a basic ID, data length code, so four bits of data, eight, eight, there's the data, CRC, and here we've got an acknowledge, and then it's telling you if it's a standard or extended frame. Let's say we want to look for 7F2. I can come up here to the binoculars. Right, so on the bus, item unknown. Put in there, basic ID, equal to, 7F2 was it? 7F2, and we can go next and it's just moved across on the top. Probably didn't see it, let me do that again. So there's another one here. If I zoom in here, we expand this out. In these. I'll expand this out so we can see the data here. Just use this red. The blue collapses it and the red expands it out. So I'll expand this out. And there we've got, so to start, basically 7F2, something unknown in front of it. So now if I go back to the find, just go next. Oh, so it's failed, that was it. So if I type in here, two o eight. 
next. We can run through and find the 208. And we've come to the end. Well, so this is back to the beginning. This is looking at the packets. If I go back to Navigator, you can see here, we've got all this empty space in memory, probably more space than actual data. So what we can do, just saw a smoky voxel go past. So over here, right click, acquisition setup. Compress data. We're on our sample depth of one meg. Apply. I've just heard a relay goes and my car's gone into economy mode. So I need to start the engine. Right, so I'll press play. There's the buffer filling. So now it's going to take longer to fill because it's filling all the memory with data, no empty spaces. Assuming I haven't knocked any wires off. Right, there we are. One meg of data. Packet list. If I go standard, extended, and remote that gets rid of the overflow and errors. In fact, while we're here, we've got two. See, I've unchecked the standard data. There's little buttons here. I've unchecked the standard. This standard, uncheck it. So now we're just looking at extended or remote. So we've got two remote frames. There we are. So these little buttons are hard to see. Well, it's hard to see the outline, but you can obviously see the text standard, hover over them, standard frame, extended frame, remote frame, overload, and errors. So if we click on these three, we get rid of the overload and errors. And so that includes the standard frames. So uncheck that. We're now looking at remote transmission. And as I said just a few minutes ago, basic ID look 78F and 7D7. That will be this device communicating with the car. I know that for after the amount of time I've spent on this vehicle. So all of this demonstration, you know. 10 minutes long, something like that. It's taken me days and days to get it sussed out. So, before I forget, this zero cube must be earthed, uh, must have the same earth reference or ground reference as the device you're testing. So, so there's another look at the data on the laptop. Every time you store some data, you can save it. Don't forget to go into acquisition and compress the data, get rid of all the empty spaces. Uh, I could go on for hours and give you more information on the CAN, but most of it's specific to the Peugeot. So to view all this data, you need this box connected, this logic cube. There's also a capture button on here, as well as using the play up the top. So if you're considering reverse engineering or hacking the CAN line on your vehicle, give this some serious consideration. The more money you spend, the more memory you get. I have to wrap this video up because I think we're approaching 20 minutes. It's already probably too long for a lot of people, but I will have had to skip so much information uh, showing how powerful this little device is, this little logic cube. Uh, for more information, I'll put a link in the show more and any information I missed, have a look at the show more. For more information on the Zero Plus Logic Cube or other devices and microcontrollers, get onto the debugstore.com.
hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Uh, if you did, don't forget to click like or leave a comment. Thank you very much.